Today, we're going to be providing the ultimate beginner's guide for PAX Day. And what that means is I'm going to be giving you all of the information I can based off the 70 hours that I've put into this game uh, in a variety of tests to share with you the best way to optimize your time. All right. Now, first things first, guys, I need you guys to really, really soak this in. This game will be different than any other game you've played. It's easy to look at this game and assume it's like other games, but it's not. Um, and it's something that you just have to feel. Now, with that being said, this is not a solo game. Can it be done? Yes, but I wouldn't wish that pain on anyone. Anyone. Okay? So now when you understand that, the depth of you being able to streamline processes is going to rely on you being part of a community greater than yourselves. Now, from my experience, this is not toxic like other games where you just feel forced to have to do stuff just to get things done, right? And as a soloist player, usually myself, I completely understand that sentiment. But in this game, everything that you do is a part of a larger whole. And with that, the contribution to that larger whole actually feels really, really nice. So in order to get the maximum effect from this game, I highly recommend being part of a crew. Now, once you guys get out of that and you guys get into the game, the first thing you guys are going to want to do is touch everything. Okay, now the reason why I say touch everything is because how you're going to learn recipes and resources is literally going to be from picking things up. So the first thing you're going to want to do when you get in the game is pick up a stick and a rock. This is going to unlock your basic fundamental recipes, specifically the ability to build a construction hammer. Once you have a construction hammer, what you can do is you can then place your plots. Once you place your plots down, then it's going to allow you to build. Now, before you guys get to building, because you guys are able to place uh, your plots down, please make sure you check your map and make sure that you are building near little rocky areas. You'll be able to identify these on the maps by like, you know, little rocks per se, uh, because in these areas, you'll be, uh, you'll, you'll be able to have access to higher tier resources. And the closer you are to higher level zones, the more stuff you have access to. So keep this in mind. Right. These are all basic things, but these are things that we didn't recognize in the very beginning. OK, now, once you have an area or areas, depending on how many plots you've purchased, you can now continue to flesh out the beginnings of your first base. Now, the direction you go from here is going to be entirely up to you. If you're going to be starting a clan, you could press O for social and create a clan or you can find a clan to join if you're looking to be part of a community. Once you are part of a clan, everybody's dots should turn blue if they're on the same uh, instance, I guess, <laughs> as we would call it as you, but you should be able to detect your clan mates from anywhere, all right? Now, once you guys have done that and you guys have started to build your base, I need you guys to understand a few things. If you guys are running with a team, it's very important to understand that you guys should select your professions accordingly. Some of the most important resources in the early game are going to be wood, flax, any type of hide and meat from animals, and iron, <laughs> okay? So these four things specifically are really, really, really going to catapult your progression. Now, as you go through this, guys, understand that when you guys start to get into hunting, hunting uh, it will be tough. You'll be able to craft a pointy stick and, you know, get rolling. But after you get your pointy stick and you get out there, if you're by yourself, you're going to run into some issues because these boars will ruin you. OK, so be very, very careful. So if you are in a group, it should be a lot smoother. But you guys want to start collecting all of these materials as soon as you can. Make sure you guys are crafting your pickaxe and your hatchet as soon as you can as well. So you can get to chopping down trees, getting logs and unlocking your recipes. The first things you guys are going to want to craft is to get a carpenter's table and one of the little wood chopping blocks. This is going to open up some other resources for you as fast as possible. If you guys get these down, you guys want to look into getting a kiln or multiple kilns. Once you have multiple kilns up, you want to make sure you fill these adequately because the charcoal that is produced from the wood that you gather is going to be used for the rest of the game. 
<laughs> literally okay if you play this game for a year i promise you you'll be using charcoal the entire god dang time so make sure you start production and always keep things on fire <laughs> all right and also make sure you guys get access to the blacksmith table as soon as you can now the beautiful thing about the blacksmith tables this is where you're going to craft all your components to get all your other tables the key thing you guys are going to need to focus on here is your weaponsmith table, okay, your weaponsmith tools, because your weaponsmith is going to be the one to be able to upgrade your tools, and you're going to want to make sure you look for the fletching tools as well. The fletching tools, I can't remember if it's in the carpentry table or the blacksmith table, but either one, this is going to give you access to bows and arrows, which will allow you to hunt things quite easier, uh, so make sure you guys take advantage of these things. Now, once you do all this, you guys will start to look for iron. Iron, uh, you're going to always want to keep in production because it's an hour cook time uh, from what we currently know, unless they changed it uh, since the preview test and previous tests. So understanding that when you guys are building facilities and structures, more is better. You, The more facilities and structures you have while you guys are building, basically optimizes your economy because let's say you only have one furnace and one batch of iron cooking that's 20 iron bars per hour it's crazy but if you have 10 furnaces then that's 200 iron bars per hour you guys catch what i'm saying here so whether your group is small or big more is better <laughs> okay and then once you guys understand those simple fundamental concepts, we're not going to keep going too crazy. Um, from here, you guys should be pretty good to go. Understand that as you guys are getting your initial economy and in, in things formulated, any item you come across may seem unimportant now, but I promise you it will become important later. All right. Now, as you guys are doing this and you guys are getting into crafting your iron, don't forget to utilize the campfire that you probably placed down and did not use. Cooking food, especially while you're inv av uh, adventuring, is going to be very, very useful because this is going to increase your overall stamina and your health, which will offset some of the problems that you're going to have as you try to figure out who's going to be providing the armor, whether it's light armor or medium or heavy. Okay? Understand that armor in this game is layered so you can wear multiple pieces of armor you can have one light piece and one medium piece over each other so for example i can have like a t-shirt and like a medium or i can have a piece of mail and a light shirt or i can have a piece of chain mail and plate mail over that so understanding that this is how you're going to get the full effect and i want you to take this into consideration because this also is going to affect your movement speed based on the type of armor that you choose from here, really, it's just weapon selection. Now, in this game, guys, everything that you select is going to be very, very important. It takes an incredible amount of time to maximize your crafting professions, and it takes a significant amount of time to level up your weapon selection. Now, what I highly recommend is once you guys get into uh, iron, is make all the damn weapons. Try them all, right? Because all of them have different abilities, and it will suit you best to see which ones you like and then from that standpoint to be able to just go in there and then decide and choose that path and put the time in now you can use as many weapons as you can fit into your hot bar <laughs> so that strategy is ultimately going to be up to you also keep in mind another mistake that we made when trying to select who's going to be the weaponsmith and the tool crafter it's the same person <laughs> all right so whoever your weaponsmith is Make sure that they're crafting the tools as well, because that's the person that's going to do it. Speaking of that. Now, after you guys are armed and equipped and you guys are thinking about adventuring, or if you guys are just hanging out in the base, something that you guys need to understand that we definitely missed in our playthroughs is that monsters drop magic or materials for magic. Meaning that you guys always need to be on the lookout for mobs that are named. Name mobs, they spawn all kinds of places, dungeons, caves, freaking uh, just in the overworld, a group of mobs. Sometimes you'll just be running and they'll spawn on you. But by killing these mobs, they can drop recipes that give you access to spells should you be able to craft them. And from what I understand, they start as low as crafting level 10 
for the particular school that you'll need so you can get into magic relatively early. This is something huge that would have streamlined our progression early on had we have known. You know, if we were combining these spells with the cooking and the things that we talked about here today. But making sure that you guys take advantage of these named mobs and killing them as soon as you can. Obviously, a lot of them are going to be scaling difficulty, so be careful. This can dramatically help your gameplay experience and help you in selecting what class you're going to play. Now, next up, if you guys ever find yourself stuck, because we found ourselves in this position multiple, multiple times, where you feel like, well, I don't know what I can craft next, or I don't know what I can do. The biggest thing with this game, guys, is make sure within your school that you've decided to focus on, whether armorsmithing, weaponsmithing, yada, 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 make sure you're crafting all of the components that you can. Or if you're not crafting the components that you can, touch everything, <laughs> okay? So let's say you have a blacksmith who's just focused on blacksmithing stuff, and you're an armorsmith, okay? If your blacksmith is crafting iron wires, iron hinges, iron such and such, iron cookies, whatever, make sure you go into his storage or you have him drop these items on the ground because as you touch these things, they will unlock new recipes for you, okay? Now, as you do this and continue to level up your crafting abilities, you're going to unlock new tiers of the same gear that you're already able to craft. So understand that crafting especially is multi-layered as you guys go through the game. Now, you stack that on top of the spell system, which allows you to basically craft armor that comes with abilities gives you in total with your weapon up to seven abilities that you can use to customize and create your character. All right. So please make sure that you guys are paying attention to each of these individual facets. And this will get you guys started out in the right way. Now, last but not least, guys, this is insanely important. Do not gamble. <laughs> on high tier gear all right in the beginning you can gamble on the low tier gear but what's going to happen is there's these little clovers boop 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 that appear when you guys are crafting equipment gear items whatever now the amount of clovers that are present kind of represent your chance of being successful okay when crafting a piece so the more clovers are present the easier it is the less clovers present the less chance you have now, in the beginning, you're going to be tempted to, to, to gamble on the difficult pieces that have no clovers. When resource cost is low, this will seem like a good idea, but I highly advise that you don't make this a habit, especially as you guys get into tier three and beyond. The reason I say this is because once you get into tier three and beyond, you're looking at like two and a half hours plus a cook. And if you're burning a crap ton of materials on gambling, you can burn a whole day's worth of grinding in five minutes, <laughs> like whole day of real life time. So make sure you guys focus on leveling up your abilities accordingly and then go from there. Oh, and last bonus tip, jewel crafting. Um, when you guys start crafting jewels in the beginning, uh, your jewelry won't have any stats on it. But once you continue to craft, they eventually will. Just a pro tip. Wanted to throw that out there. But anyway, guys, that's all I wanted to cover today. Um, I really wanted to just compile all of the key lessons that we learned uh, that we wish we would have did early game to really help you guys out, get started. I know you guys are foaming at the mouth, getting ready for this launch. So I wanted to put this all in one place so you can have access to all the help you need as you get started in the world of PAX Day. That being said, guys, thank you guys so much for tuning in. As always, it's your boy Damone, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.